Getting adequate rest is super important to getting plenty of things done and having the energy to do your chores and for the other fun things you want to do. Rest is just like any other part of life. It's better and easier when you have the proper tools to do it. I want to take a quick moment to tell you about my pillow. This Zomat pillow is awesome. The memory foam holds its shape and provides plenty of comfort and support for my neck and head. The contour of this pillow cradles your head in such a way where it is perfectly comfortable and you feel a sense of relief the moment that you lay down your weary little head. Down in the description box below, you will find a link to use to check out their products. Also, they gave me a discount code to save you some money. Use coupon code HAMAKUA15 to get 15% off your purchase. Right, well, I've taken my kid to school. I've got my bread ready for the oven. I had another sourdough starter that was really active and bubbly and beautiful this morning. So I asked, what should I make? And I was told burger buns. So I've got one set of burger buns going and I've got my two loaves of sourdough ready to go in the oven. But other than that, the day is just kind of open and full of possibilities. One thing I do need to do. Oh, dang, two things. I gotta do two things. Hmm, okay. Well, here shortly, in about half hour, I gotta run down, um, I gotta run down and meet my uh, raw milk dealer. Mm-hmm, that's right, that's right. I'm gonna go buy me some raw milk. I'm gonna get a full gallon and I'm gonna use at least one of those, probably one, one half gallon, um, cause they come in jars like this one. That one's my sourdough, not milk, but I'm gonna grab two of those and I am gonna make one of them into mozzarella cheese. I tested it out once already off camera, <laughs> not today, but I tried it once and it was really easy and really fun and I really want to try it again. I did learn right away as one does when they're doing something for the first time. Um, I did learn that I drained too much liquid out of it and made it uh, too dry. Don't get me wrong, I ate it. I ate that whole thing. It was like one, one good big old ball full of mozzarella i salted it and it just required raw milk and vinegar that was it and salt and the salt is optional but so now that i've done it one time i figured it out you know there's there's always a learning curve to everything we're doing around here you know that so now i want to try it for a second time we might be able to get around to doing that today the other thing i had just thought of is i have to go to an eye appointment i don't want to they need to scan the back of my eyeball real quick so hopefully that one won't take too long and it won't interfere with our cheese making but i mean other than that who knows there's still plenty of time left in the day 
We've got the milk. Now I'm gonna throw this bread into the oven and we're gonna make some cheese. Whoop. Okay, first we're gonna put our milk onto the heat, kind of a low heat, and then I'm gonna grab a thermometer because we don't want it to get too hot. This is for meat, but I think it'll work. It says it's 75 degrees in here. Probably is. Yeah, it seems to be working. Okay. I just need to figure out how much vinegar we need. And that's it. I'm so excited. It's so easy. Seven tablespoons for a half gallon. That's easy. We're looking to, we're looking to make it 115 degrees. It's at 90 now. Okay, that's it. Okay, we're gonna do seven tablespoons of vinegar. One, seven. Now we're gonna stir it for about 30 seconds. The heat is off. It's chunking up real fast. Okay, cool. And we're gonna let this settle, let the whey and the curds separate from each other. The oven is almost preheated. I'll throw the bread in there. Okay, it has been about 15 minutes. We're gonna, sorry, the dryer is talking. Um, we're gonna strain this out. We are gonna strain it to separate the curds from the whey. What is that? Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet eating her curds and whey. Is that what it is? Something like that. That came out mostly all in one big chunk. Now I know you're supposed to be able to microwave it to like make it so you can make it stretchy. I don't have a microwave. I've never purchased a microwave in my whole life. <sighs> we might have to use like a Dutch oven idea just to heat it up to but not cook it. You know what I mean? Well, we'll see, we'll see. Mm, my pole's not big enough either. Now, when I did this last time, I squeezed it out too much and it became really, really dry. So I want to avoid that one today. I want to avoid that. This is where if I had pigs, I could serve this to the pigs for sure. But I don't, so I'll just fertilize my garden with it. Okay, 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 okay. Well, I'm putting on a pot of um, just water so we can get the heat factor going because I think we need heat in order to make it pliable to stretch it and get the texture we're looking for um, yeah so we're gonna do that I think we need to do it in a bowl so I've got the water getting hot underneath I don't want direct heat on the cheese Could still be too wet. I just took out a lot more liquid in just a moment. And turn off the heat now, I guess. It's getting kind of hot. So the bowl is nice and warm, so I'm hoping that that will give us the effect we're looking for. We'll see. I just looked it up again. The cheese needs to be hotter than this. It needs to be 160 degrees. Then you can stretch and fold with a spoon. It will be hot. It's heated up. It says to stretch it with a spoon. 
because it's too hot to touch. Yeah, it's hot. Hot, hot, duh, it's hot. Duh. So we're like, it's slippery, so it's hard, but we're trying to stretch it out. Like, uh, like you stretch out sourdough to create tension on the outside of it. Something like that. It's kind of hard to do as it's so slippery though. Now's the time to add salt. I forgot. I almost forgot. Oh, the bread. Check on the bread. Ooh, I had to leave for town for my appointment in a minute. Looks kind of well done. Mmm. Looks pretty good. It's a salty cheese flavor. I like it. And this is the stuff that was in the bottom of the bowl. Mm. Salty. <coughs> Too much salt. Don't like the bottom of the bowl. It's like really hot, but I think it's kind of working a little bit. <gasps> the bottom isn't pretty. But the top is pretty. Yeah, not too salty. So we're supposed to be stretching. Stretching and causing it to build strength. It's not a pretty ball of cheese right now, but it's a ball of cheese. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got that all buttoned up. We have a ball of cheese. Is it worth it financially at the, no. This is $10 worth of milk that I just put in here. It's a decent sized ball of, of cheese. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's definitely going to, to uh, satisfy me and probably my kid too or whoever else wants to partake but you know it's not a lot of cheese ten dollars worth of raw milk but that's okay the idea here is that we're practicing so we know what to do with the milk once we get a cow so we're just practicing we're getting a few notches under our belt and figuring it out i'm kind of excited about it I'm gonna run to my appointment and then I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so I'm back from my eye appointment, which I didn't even know I needed. Fun fact, three months ago, I was told that I have inflammation in the backs of my eyeballs and then I should change my diet to help with that and get another scan three months from then. I don't remember that, not even a little bit. Anyways, so the point of this story is that I've been on carnivore for the last week and apparently carnivore, I already knew this, but I just didn't realize that it would translate into eyeballs too. It helps with inflammation. My inflammation by eyeballs is drastically lower and it's probably because I've been on carnivore. I don't know what she wants me to change, change about my diet because I just eat meat and vegetables anyway. Fun fact. Carnivore helps with your eye inflammation. Who'd have thought? So anyways, now I'm going to clean up this mess that I left behind, having to rush out for that appointment. Clean this up and I'll catch you guys on the other side. The bread is gonna be done soon. I gotta get these burger buns into the oven too. And then I have some green beans that need to be transplanted. They need to be put out. They're in the greenhouse in little pots and I need to plant them over here. So. I think we'll go take a look over there also and plant some green beans. Whoa, 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 whoa. Our hamburger buns turned out pretty nice. It's got an egg white wash on top. Sometimes I like to sprinkle sesame seeds on there too. But didn't do that this time. All right, let's head outside and get those beans transplanted real quick. Because you know I can't go outside without bringing kombucha. It's just, uh, it's 
That's my toxic trait. This one is blueberry. It's kind of a little bit too sweet, but it's okay. So I'm not sure, but I, hmm, I think that the beans that I planted are not climbing, but I'm not sure. As it turns out, we have a bunch of beans. So let's go ahead and harvest these right quick too. I really like these beans because they're purple when you harvest them and it makes them easy to find if you have too many bushes. Obviously I don't, but it makes it really easy to see them so you miss less when you're harvesting. Oh, there's more. These ones over here we planted together a few months ago. They're still putting out. Look at this bean. <laughs> I don't know. Where'd you go? Behind the gate here, there's those two beds right there that are full of beans already. This same type of beans. I think, maybe. I'm trying to look here and see if I know what kind of beans I planted. I really don't know what type of beans they are. I was just looking through trying to figure out if I could, if I could figure out what type I planted. There's Bush Blue Lake beans, empty package right here, but I'm really not sure. Oh, tomato update. We had our three tomatoes. I ate one yesterday. Oh, so good. And I can see that the other two are starting to turn red now too. That's very exciting. And then these guys reach beyond my reach. Two of them do. And the other two are a lot shorter, but it's okay. And they are flowering. This does have three little fruits on it. Ah, it's so exciting. Everything is doing really pretty well. Here's our beans. They are uh, they are climbing beans. So we will have to separate these because they're growing on each other. And then check out the tomatoes. We have a lot of tomatoes. These are all Roma tomatoes. None of the other ones here have sprouted yet. Wasabi, cucumber, honeydew, jalapeno, and a different pepper. So I know I'm using really old seeds with all of these, so I'm not surprised, but all of the beans sprouted. Three of the seeds did not sprout, but there's at least one in each of the cells. I think I put two in each. I'm not entirely sure. Let's go plant these. I'm going to remove the cooking greens, mustard greens, whatever they are over there. They are not getting eaten, so I'm going to remove a couple of those real quick. Make room for these. <laughs> Something's been nibbling on my eggplant. That's sad. That's very sad. But I'm going to go ahead and get these in the ground real quick, but you got to stay over here because it just started sprinkling. it for now let's go wash up well, we got everything done that's so cool i love it when we get everything done i'm gonna put these beans in the refrigerator i'm gonna add them to my bag of think of uh, beans that i've already harvested this is the solution that i've come up with they're beautiful some of them are a little bit on the big side but i will pick through them but yeah 
I'll pick through them more thoroughly. I'll take off the stems and stuff later. What I'm doing right now is I'm trying to collect them all and keep them good until I have a canner load. I want to can these beans because the last time when I canned beans, it was a different variety and I feel like they turned out too soft. I bought them just for the purpose of canning them and uh, I wasn't super stoked on the outcome. I'll still use them to refrigerate twigs either. For sure don't. So this makes a full size gallon baggie. I'm not sure how many pint tarps it would fill up. I'm gonna find out before too long, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. And my chickens started laying too many eggs for my egg collecting basket here. This is what I used to collect my eggs in every day, um, but now it's like overflowing, so I had to graduate to a different one. So now this is what I get to use to harvest goodies out of the garden. I have a full baggie. I'm so excited. I'm so very excited. Green beans. Purple green beans. And that's gonna do it. I think we've got everything done that we needed to do. Um, it's going to be a fairly not too busy week for me. So you might hear from me again in the next short while, sooner than later. So look forward to that. That's gonna be fun. We can do some more projects together. Thank you for joining me today on the Hamakua Homestead. I'll see you again soon.